the hourglass and we'll be spinning around. Oh, hold it. Got it. Now you're starting. There you go. So, um, as I was telling the board right before I got it going live, um, we are recording um, on YouTube and um, these meetings will be there for eternity. <laughs> um, and we're also live streaming on um, channel 194 cable. Um, unfortunately, if you, if the, this is just for convenience for the public, if they want to um, ask questions or make comments, you still have to come down to town hall. Um, masks, what, what, have you made any? Have I made a decision? Yeah, as far as applicants coming uh, to the at, if, uh, if, if an applicant chooses to uh, remove their mask to be able to speak clearly, if there's any, you know, if they feel they need that, that's fine. At the table. But unfortunately, when you're sitting here and sitting here, um, we're still wearing masks until the early part of June, at which time we'll be following CDC. Guidelines yeah. at the time. It's going to make a little difference. Yeah. So, okay. did you have a message? That was it. Oh, that was our message yeah. from, yes. the, from the town <laughs> that manager? That was it, yeah. Just, oh, okay. He, he's, he's, he, you know, oh, people no. have grown used to Good. being having the opportunity well, to watch these the meetings. Rest. I know that Shaw, you know, Kurt Moffat, they like to watch these meetings, so. I understand. We're going to continue. I understand. I, I was expecting like a little <laughs> No, formal. but he will be. If you haven't met our new town manager, Josh Kelly, he will be attending one of your meetings. Um, if nothing else, that Freedom of Information uh, oh, training session that we have that I emailed you earlier this week. Uh, it's the early part of June. He'll be there and, you know, he'll make himself available. Okay. Well, with that, um, this is the Town of Winchester Zoning Board of Appeals, a uh, regular meeting for Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, called to order at 707, what if, yeah, 707, <coughs> being, uh, being uh, broadcast and recorded on YouTube and on cable channel 194. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I will now call our call our roll, um, which I'll do in alpha order. Philip Allen present. Uh, David Carter present. Aubrey English present. Uh, Paul Marino is absent, excused. John Pollock present. And Hal Wilkes here. Thank you all. Okay, we have. Um, that we will be seating our alternate David Carter for our hearings this, at, this evening. Okay, um, just to uh, go over some procedural stuff, uh, even, um, some of you may have been before this board many times and this is boring, but some of you may be new. So uh, when uh, we will be calling uh, applications in order as they appear on the agenda, uh, the applicant or their representative can make their presentation, explain their project and what, what they need and what they want and what they're asking for. Uh, the board will have, the board can then ask questions of the applicant and that can go on as long as it needs to. But at, at the point that the board no longer has uh, first round questions of the applicant, uh, we open the uh, floor to any public comment relative, relevant to the application uh, so if, for example, you want to speak to an application, in particular want to ask a question related to the application, please uh, address all questions to the chair as opposed to the applicant, and that just keeps, helps keep things flowing in an orderly way. Uh, the Z a Zoning Board of Appeals uh, application is passed with a minimum of four votes as opposed to a simple majority. So if you, f if you fail to achieve four votes for your application, it will not pass. Uh, and then your, uh, your recourse would be to reapply or you know, adjust your application, change what you ask for, work with the building department and uh, reapply if, if that's what's advisable. But in any event, we have a five member board tonight, so the odds are as in your favor as they can be. Uh, and uh, 
I th and that's, I'm sorry, yes. And after the public has had at their opportunity to, s to ask any questions and th that process finishes, uh, the applicant has the last word um, and can use it however they like. When the applicant is finished, we close the public hearing and there can be no further questions from the public or submissions from the applicant or anything. Everything, everything that's preceded up to that point is the full and total hearing. We can discuss things afterwards as a board uh, and, and, and when we're complete with that process, then we make a motion on the application. Our app, the motions are always made in the affirmative, uh, so whatever whatever it is, you know, we won't be making a motion to deny anything. We make a motion to for the application, and then it wins whatever votes it gets. So, hopefully that's clear, and we will move forward to uh, our first hearing. Zoning Board of Appeals number 21-5261 variance. This is a continued hearing uh, for 504 East Wakefield Boulevard. I understand that that's we've requested uh, a, another continuance. He has, yes. yes. Yep. Uh, so I will make a motion that we continue application uh, ZBA number 21-5261 to our next meeting in June. I'll say it. All in favor? All right, moving on. Uh, application uh, ZBA 21-5262, a special permit for 240 Perch Rock Trail. your address for the record? Uh, my name is Peter Diadio. Uh, my address is 240 Perch Rock Trail. Um, Peter Diadio is a manager of a company called Sandy Drive 3, who is the owner mm -hmm. of uh, 258 Perch Rock Trail. And um, I'm here today uh, to present this application and to deliver it sent this by email, but to be a part of the record, I'm going to hand to Mark Melanson, if it's okay, with the chairman, a copy of the certified mail, uh, and the receipts, and the butter list. John sent me the one in. Have that? Okay. Yeah, so we're all set. She has the original, he has the original, and I want to be sure that's part of the record, including the, uh, the published notice um, for the record that uh, the town provided us. Other 
information in your packets, um, which is a you know, background information such as the application and, uh, and additional information describing the fence in question. If I can um, refer you to the site plan, which has uh, the way the lake is here. Bottom of your plan, foot truck trail, right here on the top of your plan. The Sandy Drive 3 house is the house on the plank right here. It's probably driven by it, it's brick and cedar. And there's an existing white fence that shows in the photos, I'll show that with you in a moment, but it's on the property line, uh, budding through the white fence. Bring your attention to this particular photo for a moment. I'll go through these slowly but um, carefully. The, the fence, which on this side of the property is only a few inches off, off the grade, but I did supply all the heights along the fence, and there's probably 30 different heights ranging from eight inches to 13 inches. I did not have the two uh, printouts with photographs in my packet. I have everything else. Uh, but could I trouble you to um, let us have it? No, we, well, I have that, but the photographs that he shared with us, we didn't I didn't. That either. I didn't he, that's he, just now? Okay. Uh, we don't know. We don't. He did it separately. Okay. So. will be entered into the formal record. I think 
that pretty much explains um, our intention and our request for, um, oh, by the way, just to come one more item, our fence does comply with the regulation. It's lower than the maximum height. It's, it's uh, not opaque, it's see-through. It doesn't spoil any distance from one side or the other. Um, from across the street, you look over the fence or through the fence, and where the particular property line is, You're just going to have it on one side, right? You're not going to, you ever plan to put it on the other side or just? Well, it's a two sided fence. No, I mean, you have one side. Oh, one side of the property. Yes, yes. on the other side of the property, we're, um, uh, there was an existing row of white pine mm -hmm. that were old and substantially deteriorated, but we kept them alive as long as we could. Yes. And uh, we, you know, started trimming them and, you know, replacing them as they died. And finally, the, we did never cut down any, by the way, never de-stumped any tree, but for the, uh, this approval for our, our house was probably in 2008, and at that time, we did not need a, uh, we weren't in front of this board because we, we required no variance, but in front of the zoning board, we promised that if there was uh, a, a destruction of any trees, we would um, uh, replace them with an adequate or better, and so we've got albermite, a row of albermite, a row of dentum, decorative flowers so there's no need for a fence there it has a, a beautiful buffer it buffers uh, association anything else all right well in that case I will open the floor to anyone who would like to speak to this application David Villa used to like to do a going once, going twice, going three times, but that seems silly. Uh, hearing none, we will, uh, uh, the, the, the final statement is yours. Um, you can make it as brief or whatever as you'd like. Well, I'll just say thank you very much for hearing me. I appreciate very much your vote. <coughs> Hopefully you'll vote in our favor. We'd like to finish the project. This, this is like our last piece. And uh, so I appreciate your vote very much uh, at the right time. Thank you. Um, with that, we will close the public hearing on ZBA application 21-5262, special permit for 240 Perch Rock Trail. Um, do we have a motion? Accept as, as uh, presented, or what? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, the, our, right. our approvals are always very specific. I, I, that's what I figured. There, you know. Yeah. No, we, we just have to. do it right. Mr. English, if you would be so kind. <laughs> Motion to grant a special permit for application number two one dash five two six two to install a fence on the property line. Heard the drawing submitted for the property located at 240 Perch Rock Trail. Okay, uh, is there a second? Second. Oh. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of the motion indicate. All opposed, I'll abstain. You have your project, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, all right. <coughs> so the following application, the um, applicant is seeking uh, it to be continued through uh, your June. Uh, let's just go on record of when. Of 
Okay, yes. I've done that before. Thank you. So the um, give me a moment. The what calendar, and uh, it will be the June twenty second, two thousand twenty one regular meeting, and it will again. It'll be held here at Town Hall in the P. Francis Hicks room. Okay. Uh, One of you two need to s sign off on the second day, whichever. <laughs> One of you, what was it? The, you need to, somebody who, whichever, both of you seconded, but one of you needs to initial the second day. Oh. Wait, what the my pen now? It's okay. right underneath your map. Oh. Yeah, you did it. Okay. Thank you for everyone's yeah, patience. Uh, our next. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The next application is ZBA number 215263, uh, variance for 304 East Wakefield Boulevard. The applicant has requested a continuance, so I hereby move that we approve the continuance of ZBA application 215263 to our next meeting to be held on June 22nd, 2021, 7 p.m. at Town Hall. May I have a second? I second it. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, okay, moving forward. Uh, this is uh, their next application is ZBA number 21 5264 for a special exception located at 626 Wynn Road. Okay. Um, actually, if uh, if you could bring it up just a little bit ahead of, or right there at your table, we should be able to see it. If we need it closer, we'll ask. Free to remove your mask if you prefer. Okay. If you can't hear me muffled, then I'll. I'll no, you, you're, you're, you're clear to me. But uh. Uh, before I start a presentation, I'd like to confirm for the record that the Wins did send meeting notices to their joint landowners within the subscribed distance, and I believe they submitted the certification of mailing to the town. I just want to make sure that's part of the record. Yeah, we got them. Okay. Uh, also, uh, they posted a public hearing sign on the property in the conspicuous location. Uh, we need to sign a certification of notice form tonight. No. No? Okay. Uh, also, uh, the application, or uh, the applicants have submitted an application on a, on a standard town form. Uh, that came with a project narrative. I want to make sure that's part of the uh, record. And also, uh, we submitted a set of plans. Uh, there's a set of drawings prepared by Leonard Engineering entitled Residential Addition, Kevin and Marsha Wynn. 626 Wind Road, Winstead, Connecticut, dated May 6, 2021. Those will be the operative plans that we would like you to consider this evening. 
in addition to that, we submitted uh, two sheets of architectural um, elevation views of the proposed uh, addition by ID3A Architectural Glastonbury, and those plans are dated April 28, 2021. So I just wanted to make sure those are uh, the records clear that that's what's being considered to see. Uh, the, as mentioned, the applicants propose to construct a new addition at 626 Wind Road. The existing dwelling is considered as an existing non-conforming structure because it's located closer to wind, uh, the Winds Road street line and to the northerly side line than allowed by the zoning ordinance. Uh, the winds seek a special exception from this board to accommodate the addition under section 3.C.6.B of the Winchester Zoning Regulation. This section allows the expansion of an existing non-conforming structure provided that, one, the proposed expansion does not come any closer to the property line to the, any portion of the existing structure. Two, the proposed expansion does not create any new non-conformity. Three, that the height of the building can be increased under the lateral constraints up to the height limit of the district. And four, the limits on maximum impervious coverage are not exceeded. Uh, the subject property is situated on the easterly side of East Wakefield Boulevard near the south end of the lake. And we have a uh, location map on the cover sheet. Um, so it's right in that general area right there, down near the bottom of the lake. Uh, the site is located in an HL zoning district, as are all of these wedding property owners. The property itself is comprised of 10 small lots that are all now combined into one parcel that's 0.58 acre altogether, nearly six tenths of an acre. Uh, we consider this a corner lot because it is bounded by Wind Road on one side and Fillmar Road on the, on the other. These are uh, both private roads. And I'm going to switch over to sheet two that shows some survey information. that we're proposing 
Uh, each of those two should be highlighted in yellow. Uh, we have black, we don't have color copies for these. Okay, so on this two here, you'll see a, a small addition up here and a larger one down here. Uh, those are highlighted in yellow on my drawing. And uh, that would be the new additional footprint area of the, of the hall. There's a sunroom in between the two additions. Uh, and that is an existing footprint shows up on, uh, on this drawing right here. And that room is being converted from just a regular sun porch to a three season sunroom without change in footprint. Uh, there's a new deck being proposed. My battery is dead, that's not good. There's a new deck that's being proposed uh, off of the northerly edition. Uh, that deck is uh, on the west side of the north edition. And there'll be new stairs coming down. That deck is one story above grade on the back side of the house, the Highland Lake side. And there'll be a full set of stairs coming down toward the lake. Those stairs are located inside of the building setback line, so there's no setback issues with respect to that. Uh, the old front door of the home, which shows up on the right side, the stoop and the front door here, those are going to be eliminated and relocated over to the uh, new addition on the south end of the house. The closest corner of the south addition will be 29.97 feet from the front line, whereas the existing front corner is 28.6 feet. So we're 1.4 feet further away from the Wind Road street line under the proposed condition at that addition than the existing home. And on the north addition, on the north side, uh, the closest corner to the property line will be 24.35 feet from the north side line whereas the existing closest corner is now 23.35. So in both cases, the proposed addition is slightly further away from either sideline or street line than the existing structure. Uh, all of the other side yards comply with the minimum setback distances, so they're not problematic with respect to that equation. Uh, on this site, the impervious coverage does not exceed 15% maximum under the existing or the proposed we're about uh, tables we show roughly 11% coverage under existing and I think we're going to somewhere around 14 for total. So in both cases we are under the 15% max. Uh, as you can see the addition was designed to avoid coming any closer to the front and the north sidelines uh, than the existing addition and uh, we, the applicants worked extensively with their architect and me to interpret the zoning regulations and change the actual architecture uh, so that we could avoid the need to come see the variance. We felt that our chances would be better and the world would be a better place if we uh, didn't crowd the street line or the north side line. We asked for special permit to go to the On sheet three, uh, this is just a comprehensive engineering plan that shows uh, how the site will be constructed.
and together that's more roof area than we're proposing as new construction in total. And so the first inch of runoff that comes off the roof will go into the drain garden and then seep into the ground. Uh, and we also have extensive erosion controls shown on this particular plan. Uh, it's a sensitive area in the Ohio Lake. It's got some relatively steep grades, so it's important to do a good job controlling erosion during construction. And the fourth and final sheet uh, in our engineering set is simply uh, an erosion control narrative of these water instructions to protect the site against erosion. We have details of the rain garden and all the erosion control measures and a couple of pieces of site work. I won't really get into that because it's irrelevant to the zoning issues, but if you do have questions on that, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, we also uh, include the elevation views of the house on the following sheet. And uh, while to me they're interesting to look at, uh, I felt that uh, one sheet in the architectural plan set that was the most useful to me was some perspective views of the architect's room. I don't know how well you can see them from the seat, but uh, ah, okay. this, these views kind of show pretty much what's going to happen. <laughs> Is this project um, uh, would fall with at all within the purview of Inland Wetlands? Uh, actually, Kim um, and I talked about this this morning. Uh, I believe the zoning regulations say that if you have more than 4,000 square feet of uh, site dispute, that you need to have an erosion control plan. Um, I did some quick checks after I talked to Kim. Yes, we do have more than 4,000 square feet of footprint area on the ground um, and we do have an erosion control plan. The agency in this town that uh, regulates the erosion control would be the wetlands commission. We have no regulated wetland activity so we mm -hmm. don't need a permit from them for wetland regulated activities. We simply need to go through potentially camps interpretation is correct which I believe it is. We would have to go through a pro forma review of the erosion and that, that this would be supervised through the building department or through wet wetlands. What's that? The yeah, review sorry. of the that final review of the erosion. For the erosion, it's wetlands, but it, it it's only because they're the designee for uh, reviewing erosion control. Like okay. you said, huh. you, you wouldn't necessarily need that type of a, a wetlands approval. I understand. Yeah. So the agent determination, basically. Okay. Dave, no. what's the, on it, page two or four? Is it a rain garden? Oh, that's the rain garden? Okay. The blue, the blue area. That's a rain garden. I just want to make sure it wasn't a pond. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will be when it rains. Uh, I'm just asking. Yeah. No, no, that's a proposed rain garden. Six inch deep water for a few hours before it's Dave, there's no dimensions on the size of these additions. Uh, Anywhere in the plan? Okay. Yeah. We just drew them right, we took the architect's CAD drawing and just plopped them right on the mm -hmm. plan. We did not put 
something you mentioned that they don't like. Do you know what the dimensions are? I can scale them for you. Uh, or I can add them as a condition of approval. Uh, so you're asking if they to approve something with no dimensions on it. That's well, the important information is there, and that is the distance from the actual corner to the street line that's in sight. Those are accurate. We have a bomb, we have a class A two survey that we started with, and those what we drew on the plan was directly laid on there from the architectural plans from the draft plan, so we can leave out alterations. And, and when calculating coverage, you, you do that based on, you know, you, you um, digitize it, right, to calculate yes, coverage. Yes. So, I mean, you know, that's how you yes. come up with that number is. What is, what is your recommendation? Should we? Uh, up to the commission, I but I don't think they've that. ever approved anything without any right. dimension. But, but, but you could, condition, I mean, like, you know, they're, they're, you're not, there is no cap on square footage, right? You right. know, it, you know. So, you, so conditional approval based uh, on updated on drawings to update. include the dimensions. You know, we can look at it next month. Then. I mean, they shouldn't. But you wouldn't want to delay it just for just something like we, that. It would be a conditional approval, and if when we get the revised plans, if there's if if the changes are not there, mm -hmm. then the the approval is revoked. You know, everything is trying to scale. I mean, you can yeah. take a scale, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's the a important part where you would want to delay it is if there was no, um, the distances weren't called out. That's what you're looking at. You want to make sure you don't encroach on those side, those setbacks. So, you know, because if you do, then you need a variance. Yeah, I mean, it's literally 20 minutes worth of work. You know, it, it's it's you know when when the difference between a special permit and when you're coming in looking for a variance are you know the front yard setback, rear yard setback, side yard setbacks, and then impervious surface coverage, and then height, mm -hmm. and and all of that is included in your drawings. Okay. Any other questions from our board? Is, is there a maintenance schedule for that, David? The uh, the rain garden. Uh, really, the only maintenance that really needs is picking the weeds out of there in the fall uh, and adding mulch to the edge. So okay. we did not, there's no maintenance plan. Uh, it's a relatively small feature um, and it's a, it's a shallow depression. You know, oh, I know what it is. And with a mulch bed in it and plants it. Uh, uh, so and just to correct something that you said, it, it won't be any, or maybe you said it, I'm sorry, it won't be an agent approval. I, I don't do agent approvals for things okay. at Highland Lake. It will go before the commission. It'll be two meetings. You know, the first meeting they accept, second meeting they they likely act. But it, it, it's a two meeting process through wetlands. On that southerly boundary that you have on your second page that shows the southerly boundary of their actual property line, there's a big difference between that boundary line and the road. Is that a taking line or someone else's property? or? Back up just one page. One page. Uh, one right there. Okay, you got your boundary line and then you got the road. Right here? That distance, correct. Yes. That is uh is that town that taking is a, line or no, that is the highway. There's no other lot in okay. between that this portion of the property right here and the road. And what we have here is a paper road, probably with nebulous ownership. No, I own several lots just like that before. So you understand, but yeah. Yeah, and I understand the inaccuracy. Paths, right. Uh, cow paths that meander up, up through what right. people perceive to be the, the right of way over time. Right. But and it's usually who plowed it when and then yeah, how put yeah, trying to put the plow down. Right? Yeah, you get around a rock or a big tree at the time or whatever. So right. that, um, you know, there, there's no lot. Here, here. This is a separate piece of property. All right. All right. Any other questions?
questions? What was Mark um, Pardon? Mark mentioned about the heights. What, what were you? Uh, what did you say was lacking on the height mark? It wasn't on the diagrams. It um, wasn't on the sketches. No, this one. This one's got the, the height dimensions. Yeah, it, it, it was, it was, was, the, it was the, air, the the actual area of the addition specified, which oh, doesn't okay. appear. It was the size of the building. The size of the addition is on there. All right, because right. he does have the height. The, the sizes of the areas are listed in those tables right. across the top. Yes. The, the drawing, but the actual dimensions, 23 feet, 18 feet, 6 inches, they're not listed on the plan. That's the only discrepancy. All right. Anything else? All right. Uh, it's, it, since we don't have any more questions, if there is anyone from the public who would like to speak to this application, please let us know. I guess not. So uh, the last word is yours. All right. Well, I again want to thank the commission for your time and your understanding, especially on issues like the, the dimensions, where we greatly appreciate uh, your approval. And if it does come with a conviction that we have dimensions, very simple to do. With that, we will close <coughs> the public hearing on ZBA application number 215264, special exception for 626 Wynn Road. Uh, let's see. Um, what's the proper form to modify the con uh, oh, condition of approval? Okay. So our condition of approval is provision of updated plan with engineer to submit updated uh, site plan with dimensions of new uh, addition called out. with the condition appended because I don't think I've ever actually done one of these with the conditional approval. So would you help us again? <coughs> <coughs> Motion to grant a special exception, exception for application number 21-5264 to put an addition on the house per the drawing submitted for the property located at 626 Wind Road with condition of approval uh, engineer to submit updated site plans with new addition dimensions called out. Correct. Is there a second? Second. We'll do it then. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? All right. Well, we have the motion. Um, all those in favor, signify. Opposed, abstain. You have your project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Oh. We're making much better progress than I was afraid of when I first <laughs> looked at the agenda. <laughs> All right, so. Moving forward, uh, we will now call to order the uh, ZBA application 21-5265 for variance at 353 Platte Hill Road. Thank you. Oh. My name is David Campbell, my wife Alicia. We live on 353 Flat Hill Road, and we would request a variance for a front front porch extending out approximately seven feet from the 
front of the front doorway of my home and extending the width of the house uh, approximately 23 feet wide. <clears throat> if you look on the map, you can see the front stoop that's existing on the front door. And uh, we wouldn't be exceeding that. We were going to go out as far as the bottom step with the deck. And then bring the support the width of the house, uh, probably stepping it back from the road, not to the corner of the house because of the roof line. I will be back about a foot from the edge of the house. And uh, <clears throat> so the porch would actually be shy of 24 feet. It would be more like 23 feet wide by seven feet in depth. Uh, with a with a hip frame roof over it. Uh, just just like you see on many homes, the, the front porch has a, 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 a I call them rocking chair porches. Uh, and then, because there's nowhere on the on this little house of ours that's 24 foot square and there's really no porch on it at all. Right, as of now, other than that little stoop on the front. Uh, so we'd like to have a, a front porch to sit out there and relax. Um, I think the problem stems with the front frontage from the road to the house. But, you know, this house was built in the 40s, I believe. And I, you know, there's no way I could ever conform with any kind of addition on that and, and comply with the roadway, the, the front of the road. So uh, that's why we're here, uh, to see if we can get this approved. It would be an open, open porch, of course. Can you give me an estimate of what the different, you know, currently the, the existing house, the, the corner that's closest to Platte Hill Road is <coughs> slightly further away than the corner of where your deck would be. Is that going to be like th yeah, three this, feet? This drawing is deceiving. I think if you drew a parallel line with Platte Hill Road, it doesn't really, it shows a, a nick of a job there. That's where I'm going to bring that porch in a foot to make that it wouldn't encroach on Plot Hill at all. And I really have to do that in order to get my roof line underneath my rake edge of my existing roof. That's right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I, I really can't go to the corner of my house. I understand. Go on and make the roof line tie in correctly. So it, whether I have to come in even further than a foot, to comply with the, the zoning regulations. You know, I think they, sh they show 24 and a half feet to the tip of my porch. Um, and I don't know even where my surveyor got that measurement. It, it's gotta be the property line, I'm sure. It's not to the edge of the road. The road, the, the, the yard's so soft to the, to the road. So it, this has gotta be property line from state to state. And that's what the dimensions ended up being. But the corner of the house is not much more than that, if any. And I mean, I can I can make it the same, eat with ease, you know, if that were gonna be an issue, which I'm sure it would be, so. The, the reason I was asking was to try to gauge, you know, you've got the, you've got an existing non-conforming structure and what I was trying to get an idea of how much more nonconformity would be involved in that than, because that's, 
Yeah. Well, that's that's not in, that's not included in the calculations of this plan, which we are, you know, we usually see that sort of thing. Um, but uh, uh, it may it, it it's not a it's not a huge increase. I mean, I can I can hold conformity. whatever dimensions the corner of my existing house measures. I can hold that dimension on that porch. Will that will that work for you? Yeah, it would it would work because I don't think you're talking more than inches. It's here. it's not a if, lot. If any, yeah, it's a, it's a few inches. If I had to shrink my porch down a few more inches to, to conform with that, that's not a problem. How does that scale out, Mark? Well, it's not the scale is shrunk, so yeah, no, it's. What is it taking line up there? It's got to be at least 15 feet, <coughs> if not more. Scales to about two feet difference or four, two feet. It's hard to say. It's not the scale really, but right. Well, so the question would be then if um, you know if we if we want to make conditional approval based on re revised sure, plans being submitted. No, it's just like it, you've got one, like you've got a a, a, a size that is to scale. You, this is what Mark's going off of, and so this is out of whack. Oh, okay, I understand. And, and I would, you know, when they come in for a zoning permit, they would have a zoning permit to construct this, and I, I'll ask for another set, or I might ask you for yours tonight, unless you want to keep it. You know how you always give them back? Because uh -huh. that's what went through my head. We should have one that's to scale on the file, okay. no matter what. Properly posted. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what are what's up? I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, is there anyone in the public who would like to address this um, application? Anything to add to wrap up? Uh, no, uh, other than thank you for your time, and I hope that you consider it and approve our request, and uh, we can move move, move forward. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, we will close the public hearing on ZBA application 21-5265, a variance for 353 Platte Hill Road. Do you feel like reading again? Sure. Uh, I, oh. Are we going to vote on this now? Uh, I, 
we, we, we pass the motion and then discuss it. And I think you know any of those any of the questions that we right. that we need to decide, we'll do that. And then vote. Okay. Motion to approve ZBA application number 21-5265 to modify variance number 4794 to not build the addition that was proposed and to request a front yard setback variance of 25.5 feet for the purpose of building a 7 by 22 covered porch on the northeast side of the residence as per the drawing submitted for the property located at 353 Platte Hill Road. Is there a second? Aubrey, that should be 7 by 24. 24.5, correct. Was, uh, 7, 7 by 24? 24.5. 7 by 24. Okay, should I reread that again? Just, just do the 4. Yeah, just yes. for the purpose of building a 7 by 24 covered porch. Yes. Correct. Okay. I'll second. Discussion. Well, I was uh, wondering what the impervious coverage was prior to this. I, I see they have uh, existing proposed impervious coverage, 11.7. That's uh, with the addition. Yeah, 11.1 .1 was the earlier mm. impervious coverage. Uh, what do you see? Uh, just to the right. Just to the right of it. 2643 square feet or 11.7 percent. It's a it's a weird layout for this that data. 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 Damn, all this is cattywampus on the lot. Agenda item is ZBA application number 21 5266 uh, for a variance at 534 Wheeler's Point. Um, my understanding is that the applicant would like to continue to our next meeting. Um, so I make a motion that we continue uh, application number 21 5266 to our June 22nd, 2021 meeting here 7 p.m. at that time. May I have a second? May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. We will we will see you all next month on that. And finally you're not so you got one more if Oh right, one right. That's because the because the special permit. permit. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Sorry about that. And uh, Zoning Board of Appeals application 21 5267, a special permit for 534 Wheeler's Point. The applicant has requested a continuance till next month, so I hereby move that we continue application uh, 21 5267, special permit to June 22nd, 2021. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? So moved. Okay, we will see 
We will see the chance applications next month. All right. And finally, Zoning Board of Appeals application number 21-5268, special permit for 542 East Wakefield Boulevard. Yes, please. For the record, I'm Randall Serkey from 543 East Wakefield Boulevard. And it's going to look like the fence shown in the picture, obviously, right? That is correct. This is just one portion of it, right? That's one portion. You're, are you planning to bring to bring that section up to where the current walkway sits, or is the fence going to continue the line that this I'm small sure portion they, is? Actually, my wife did a little cut and paste of the fence that's going to be So in other words, the new fencing would come up towards the road from the from the from the walkway gate. Correct. There'd be a little jog in there. That's the, the, the to a gallon of toner for 10 pictures. So you're, you're going to retain that little parking pad? That is correct. Okay, that's not, doesn't really seem to be reflected on the plan. Because um, on the plan, it looks like the fence would be going in, a, in, an, in an unbroken line um, as opposed to, it seems to have, oh, okay, here I can, uh, yeah, there just seems to be no more there. This stuff is not big. Yeah. From an aerial view, you really can't show the gate. Right. And then showing the fence going north of this. So in other words, the, the, the current parking pad is actually in, would actually be in this area of the, on the plan. That is correct. 
Okay. If you're looking at the picture, you'll see there's a gray stone yeah. in there. Yeah, that's what I was, that's, that's the part that, that was where I was not understanding exactly where that fence line was going to run, because oh, okay. I, I would have assumed so that the parking yeah, tab was part of the parcel. And it doesn't appear. It's showing that edge, but it's not proportionate. Yeah, 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 when you yeah, shrink yeah. it down, it makes it look like a. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's irrelevant to, to, this, to this question right now, but I don't, I don't see the parking pad on the plan, and I would assume that the parking pad would be on your parcel. It looks like you've just the road location and the distance from the road to your exit, your proposed fence right. is very deceptive. It doesn't show the actual depth of the pad. Okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming that the pad actually extends almost up to the 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 actual defined line of uh, the defined border of the the Wakefield Boulevard. I know the town owns from the road to a certain point up to on our property. Right. And I think that's where that parking area. Okay, I just, uh, like I say, it doesn't impact the question before us today. I was just confused. Should it be on any surveys telling me that this is a parking area? Uh, no, we, we get into that because it's not necessarily shown on the plan because if you look at the title block of the survey, you know, it, the title block of the survey that tells you what the surveyor is surveying. Right. And he need not include anything outside of that. Right. So that's why you're not seeing anything outside of what of the they parcel. own. Right. Okay. Well, that was just the, it was a confusion of trying to understand the right. photographs yep. to the plan. Okay. Um, and now we understand. Thank you. For the, this in the public who would like to speak to this application? Hearing none? It's uh... But you can't close the public hearing, I'm sorry. I oh. was talking to Mark. They need wetlands approval. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Because it does, this is that's, something that falls within a wetlands yeah, jurisdiction, definitely. so you, so you know. So should I, we continue it pending? Yeah, or? yep. That's what has to be done. Okay. You, if you close it, you can't. That's you right. can't change anything. You, you, can't, you can't close her. You wouldn't be in a position to. And is it on the wetland calendar? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yep. So second, second reading? Second hearing? No. It, it, well, yes. It, it, they, it's a modification of an existing permit that's on that parcel. So they can approve it in one meeting. He could have had his approval um, at the May meeting, but the. It, they didn't get to it because of the length of the agenda. Right. Okay. So I understand. So w the, f the form we should take is to hold to the public hearing open to continue the public hearing. Okay. All right then. Thank you very much. In that case, I move. I make a motion that we continue the public hearing on application number two one five two six eight for five forty two East Wakefield Boulevard, pending. Um, action on the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission. Uh, and if possible, we will continue this at our June 22nd meeting in tw June 22nd, 2021, 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Moved. And we will see you when we can. Thank you for accepting my application. We don't have minutes to approve uh, uh, because your secretary is slacking. All right. Well, so we'll hold it off on this one. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you get a new secretary better. We'll set a world oh, record. Uh, Pardon me? <laughs> we almost set a world's record. I, I was expecting not to get out of here until... Oh, no, no. Believe me, when the other two were coming up, I said this is going to be a long night. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, so we have no old business. Um, the April meeting, we don't have we don't have minutes for that, right? That's right. Okay, so we will uh, we will take that up next month. Uh, any correspondence we need to think about? Just the um, email that of the people about about the training. Freedom, yeah, and I don't remember the date off the top of my head. Did everyone get an email about the Freedom of Information training? Was that yeah. July or June? I thought you said July. What um, did I say? I'm looking. I'm looking for it right now. Um, it is July 8th um, right. on at, at 5 p.m. <laughs> yes. What, what day is that? That's a Thursday. Is that an all day deal? Or no, no, it's only Thursday an hour. Five at night. It's an hour. Five to, yeah, five to five six. To oh, six okay. Just Freedom of Information Act is really important. Yeah. It really is. is. But it doesn't take a huge length of time to do a training it's on. It's not yeah, that involved. It really yeah, isn't, but you've got to know it. Right. It's in this room. Right. It, it's just helpful, useful information. So that we all keep our tails out of door jams. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, any other business? None? Uh, do we have any discussion with zoning enforcement officer? No. 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 We don't want to talk to him. I will entertain a motion to Sure. So move. So move. <laughs> Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we can't dance. That's